All right, but seriously, y'all best step off my car. What are you, what are you doing, Mr. Fuck the World? You guys have the same hair sh length. What's up? What, what? Who are you? That's one brutal motor carriage. Uh. Yeah. The one word this game bleeps. <laughs> That's the correct number of asterisks, I guess. Says the young man with that written on his back. If I were a real skull right now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan, fuck the world. Snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now. Skulls. Now there's a strong organization title. Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and on the contrary. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. I almost wonder if they committed to having that word in the script and then walked it back late in development and like, nope, nope. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. Young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Who are the Skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. <laughs> No, I really don't. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the... Uh... <laughs> Besmertie. Sure. The Besmertie. His voice rings with excitement. Besmertie, or the Besmertie, the Immortals, are West Revacholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever, jacking carriages and getting into high, ski, high speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger, infamous for their non verbal modus operandi. Non verbal? If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual, a testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around their brightly painted, bottom-lighted vehicles. Oh, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. That's funny. I think I mentioned that earlier. Specifically, they're talking about the spinners earlier, and I was like, oh yeah, the one... I never quite got spin, uh, skinners, uh, spinners, but the one thing I kind of got was like the weird, like light, the light that go, comes out of the bottom of the uh, car, and then it's like here they are. That's the other thing they're mentioning. You guys know Cindy the Skull? The young man's eyes glaze over it as he marks, in a voice filled with longing. Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah. The other guy lights up too. A true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. By the way, if you guys see Cindy, give her our regards. He's at, he adds, returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient towards them. Who's Van Eyck? Old oh, man, it doesn't matter. You'll be long gone before his greatness is recognized. A young woman kneels on a sheet of ice, as if looking for something lost ages ago. 
He bends until her right ear touches the frozen water. She listens to it crack slowly. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm pretty old. Yep. He nods enthusiastically. Old as fuck. Yeah, man, it's like a death's door. No more do you know nothing about the future. You won't be there. Damn. You guys have committed to that. Oh, even his jacket is censored. I just noticed. It's like blurred out. Like it's been worn off or something specifically there. Why aren't there more skulls and martinets? The Union does their share of policing and martinets. At least where gangs are concerned. The lieutenant replies instead. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Don't you worry about that. We're going to make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. The young men exchange approving nods. Your rhetoric is confusing. Are you in part of the skulls or not? We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. And what makes you think the organization would accept you? Because we could just we could be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. Oh yeah, you'll f you'll see for sure once we're in. It's the last thing you'll ever see before the void consumes you. You're literally threatening cops. Throw throw him off his game. Are you sure a skull would say that? Uh, he looks confused. Well. Yeah, I mean, we're we're only saying practice things for now, so we don't mean no harm for the, to the Skulls brand or, or to you. This is definitely something for the Skulls would say, but we're not trying to encroach on Skulls brand in any way. The contrary, we're just here to market it. You don't want to encroach on their brand? Wow, what a tough sounding gang with their fucking like, their like YouTube fucking like brands to look out for. Oh, then why is a criminal game gang need marketing? We think of it more like two franchises merging, you know? Us two and the Skulls. I really feel like we would add more at the table. Spice things up here at Martinez, you know? Get the old machine of pain and suffering oiled up real good. Okay, I get what the Skulls do, but what do, what do you franchise in? Youth unemployment? Whatever, man. Work is for pussies. The young man frowns, aggrieved. You wouldn't get it anyway. So you're just pretending to be as nasty and vicious as the skulls. Hey, we could be just as hard. Like pavement on top of pavement or brick on top of another brick. Wow. Or a grave on top of a grave. Dang. These kids have the vocabulary but might be missing a brain. If I only had a brain. Enough about the scullery, then. Hmm? He throws a longing glance at the Kanima. You know anything about the murder that took place here? Murder? A man was hanged in the backyard of the Whirling in Rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. He clears his throat. It was a man. Also, he was hanged. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, man. I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's move along. Hey, stop that there. How does one know anything? Ah, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. However, there is no way these young men could possibly be aware of, their, of her work. I know that you don't know shit. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind the hostel? What if it's art, or a mere specter? Maybe it's true. The hanged man is merely a prop and a performance. We are the audience, and the artist hiding somewhere in the dark. I mean, that's true. Well, it's not a prop in that it's a real person, but it was a, it was a prop in that it was a fake murder. But he's really dead, just not that way. It's not. A man is dead. We need answers. So what do you think we know? So what's with the jackets? What about them? 
Why does yours say piss on it? Or that plus more? <laughs> well, first off, it's a statement about not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person. Even though the statement has character, and I do like piss. <laughs> the word piss blah, 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 epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem. Not as they are, and uh, I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you gotta admit it catches the eye, and since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards the uh, basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Oh, uh, what? What I mean by this is we are all pissed and that the world is all inherently meaningless. Though he seems lacking in vocabulary, it seems the young man has expertise in the law, at least one field, even if it's rather narrow. Okay, why do you have fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one. Or so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship, the thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket or are they derived from something else entirely? To catch a fish you need to hurl the lure many times, and even if it isn't certain that you'll get anything, if you blow up the lake though... Blow it up! You get more fish in a shorter time, and... For time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in some... in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that to me feels glorious, sticking your dick into the void. I hate to admit it, but in a weird way he's got a point. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Oh god. No. No. No, maybe one of the jackets, but not the other one. No, definitely a coincidence. Your lack of imagination is baffling, but you do make up for it with, yes, questions. 28% chance. Isn't it a guaranteed failure? I have a very low chance of getting those jackets. I also think I'm currently still in everything. Yeah. All red checks fail. So if I do the check anyway, I fail. He almost got me there. Well, talking with you has definitely been something. Wow. So someone's been a little... boring. What? Yes, my standard, liege. Someone's been seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. Kim, am I boring? You? He looks at you. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> That's what I thought. See? You're so regular and vinyl brown, he doesn't even want to talk to you about it. That's definitely not the case. What is this, picking on me for not being crazy enough? That's the least of my concerns. No need to be defensive. The regularity, the brownness, the cut and dry have their appeal. A very standard appeal. I like standards. Of course you do. Maybe some regulations and unusual pistol to go with them. It's official. My lord's cop type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll let- I'll send out a telefax. People keep referring to these copo types as if they're like... Like as you fit into a singular one, but I've already- re I've already registered as a- as a sorry cop. <laughs> Wait, this'll be my copo type now? Yes, the type of cop you are, sire. Think of it as a caste, a class even, a nation of regular law officials that you belong to. It comes, of course, with the usual benefits. I'm only- I'm literally been more superstar than boring so far. How are you even gonna give me boring points when I straight up have more superstar points? 
What what the fuck are the apocalypse cops choices? <laughs> Probably like pro violence or something. What's done? I never know what's done. Wow, it's a long list. Feel that notification. Why not? Send out the Telefax, then I'm not I'm not ashamed. Done and done. No actual communiques will be sent, of course. That would be too dramatic. Eh. Wow. My, nothing funky. Minus two Inland Empire. Okay, so it looks like you got a bit of the normal in you. A touch of the regular. Four grams of Johnny Normal Cop. Who would have thunk it? You, the extremist of all cops. You said some pretty boring things back there, and now you have two choices. You can either leave it behind and forget about it, or you can try to utilize your normalcy, internalize it, get a touch of vanilla back into the herring-flavored egg and licorice ice cream of your mind. Wow, that was a lot. Just in general, that was a lot. I can't be boring. Look what I did to all this landscape with the little car crashes and the drinking. I just don't want to wear a shirt that says that. That's really... It's not a great look. Oop. There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Case solved. Who's Dick Mullen now? I am. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. Wait, what did I crack exactly? What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class and that drunk is. It's her husband, the missing husband. Yes, and you found him. Now go tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. This doesn't add up. I'm only making a fool of myself. Do marriages make any sense? Does honor? You're not a filthy philosopher. You're an officer of law. It's time to ace this case and not brood over reputation. We can deal with the perception management later. What is my authority? It's not great. This is Give me champagne. I'm going in. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found right now. Can I just talk to him? Who's the working class woman? I don't deserve a... I don't deserve nobody, buddy. Shit ain't nothing for me. Make my own ways all. I always have, always will. They only know me. No one knows me. I work hard, I play hard. Nobody works harder. The fuck are we talking about? I straight up- oh no, Thursday stayed on the screen, even though I cleared it. Looking at a wall. Dang it. Still, we come for the Cindy. All right, I could have talked to her downstairs. Oh, well. I just went in a fucking circle. All right, well, I did it. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Piss boy and fuck the world sent their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but... She softens. But their hearts are in the right place.
Schools are cool. Can I be a school? Fat chance, but you can still do your part to revitalize the neighborhood. Okay, then how's that? She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her fingers to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens, the people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulcher. We'll paint it red. We'll bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. Jesus. I don't think I want to be a skull. <laughs> we better hurry up with the gay agenda. So we can fill the entire town with that instead of the skulls taking over, obviously. Somebody has to take over the... Fe the the, uh, the power void, when inevitably, probably, the, uh, union collapses as the story proceeds or something. Alright, Titus, we got questions. It's you again. What is it? Okay, I talked to Clashe. Now I need to talk to Ruby. Why? He leans back and regards you with curiosity. Because she's your real leader. You're a cuckoo cop. He smile. His smile hides a flash of anger. I'm the only man responsible for this unit. Get with it or fuck off. Yeah, fuck off. I'm on a level with you. She's the next link in the chain that leads me to Laylee's killer. Sounds like you're making a suspect her a suspect in this. Not on my watch, you're not. Ruby's one of us. We're not gonna throw her under your moral intern steamroller. Fuck that shit. Precarious world. And fuck you too, moral. He throws a glance at Titus with the last syllable, leaves his lips. The big guy sighs. Ruby is missing. If you hide from police in a murder investigation, you become a suspect. You know how it works, guys. That's nothing. Just legalese. You don't even have a sound theory. He crosses his arms. I don't want to be a rude, but we're trying to get some R&R &R here. Think you could fuck off now? I think we'll keep sticking around, Titus. You'll be surprised how quickly a theory presents itself if you keep looking. Impossible? How impossible? Less impossible than you think. Present a, present a solid theory about why Ruby could have done it. 17%. I found the union box. I saw the winch outside. I staged like a play. Reconstructed murder scene. Found antique rifle. I'm on my way there. Hmm. And I do have a point to spend, so I can try again. My logic's only a three? Really? I need to put some logic clothes on. The logic is... Yeah, I have a negative logic for my clothes right now. And that's like a problem for me. Now we've gone from minus one to plus one. Isn't this nice? No, god damn it. Ooh. I have a better... Logic item. Weird how that's a logic item, but okay. And do you give me logic? Inland Empire and Empathy at the cost of authority. Well, I don't really need authority that much anyway right now. God, I look weird right now. What's this? Oh, right. How not to lose. It is impossible not to. 
The world is balanced on the edge of a knife. It's a game of frayed nerves. You're pushed on by numbers and punitive measures, pain, rejection, and unpaid bills. You can either play or you can crawl under a boat and waste away, turn into salt or a flock of seagulls. Your enemies would love that. Or you can fight. The only way to load the dice is to keep on fighting. Whoa. Precari- Uh... Critical success and failure thresholds lowered by one? It doesn't that make a critical failure impossible? If it's already- what? How does that work? I'm confused. <laughs> I get the cri I get I get critical success. It's like when you get a it's like when your weapon in D and D increases your crit range from just being a rolling a twenty to being rolling a a nineteen or an eighteen and stuff like that. That's always the cool stuff. So we can start spreading your crit range. But if you lower the failure rate by one, does it just get rid of our crit fails just out of the game now? Because that's how I interpret it. It was already at the minimum value of Snake Eyes. So lowering it by one makes it not accessible, I would assume. I think this means that I can now see a 100% success chance sometimes when I talk to somebody. It's you again. What is it? Wow, that chance got way higher. All right, let's, come on. Solid theory about why Ruby could have done it. A sudden flash of lightning in your neocortex. The hostile cafeteria is lit by its eerie blaze. Floor plans, bullet trajectories, webs of human emotional channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure Ruby didn't off him? Because she was here all night with us. He's cobbling together shit so he can put her away. It's Cop 101. She was here all night. The lieutenant ignores the tattooed man. 11.30 to 12.25. She was here doing all that time. Yeah, with us. Drinking. Near the stage there. He points to the karaoke stage. You didn't go to the toilet? No. That's a lie. I mean, that's a lie. <laughs> you know that's not the case. Alright, she took a fucking leak, okay? For a moment, maybe went out, too. She has a complex operation to run from her, Lori. He points to the intersection. She's a busy girl. Always has been. Ah. Uh... Her Lori. So now we're finally sure she is the girl driver. I didn't, I didn't think the Hardy, uh, the 8th eighth Hardy boy was going to be the girl driver. Because I figured the, har the drivers aren't locals. Of course. Ruby's the lady driver in this great big jam mystery. Probably. You have to keep investigating. They'll never open up about it. Just because she, uh, she was gone for five minutes don't mean she magically got to the roof and shot the merc. He taps on his temple. I've been through this. It's not plausible. He's been through it. That means he's suspected her, too. All right, we're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for sometime during the window. This is crucial. Now let's pl place her on the roof. You do agree the shot came from the roof, right? Why not? You can't draw a straight line into Clashay's windows from any of the surrounding buildings. Not from what I know about Martinez. That's what I was saying. Like, they're setting up these trajectories, but I'm like, her window faces this direction. It's a really inconvenient building orientation. I'm also really amused by the fact that, like, the, the layout of the map is increasingly, like, becoming crucial to the entire plot. I do love that the area you explore is all the range of areas where bullets could have come from for the case. Because yeah, at first you're just like, I don't know, they just, this is the map they gave me. Maybe from the coast? But like I said, I've been too busy dealing with you idiots to know that you haven't been. You guys have been stand- you guys have just been sitting here all day for like four days now. I only come to talk, to talk to you for, like, maybe an hour or less per day. He shakes his head. I don't think it was a sniper. It was a close-up. 
There's a 72% chance the bullet came from the roof. 72%! He picks up his beer. That's a percentage and all. There's a percentage and all. Where'd you get it from, your guys in the lab? Definitely lie. The truth is not credible. Yeah, we have a ballistics lab in Koran we consult in cases like these. Wouldn't hurt to have one of those in Martinez, he nods. Still, all the labs in the world don't put her on the roof. How'd you get there, Climb? Ruby could have gotten to the roof from somewhere inside the whirling. Nah, the only way up there is through Clashe's room. That's literally not true. There's a door right there. We just got the key to it, probably. In this room. How much do you guys know about this place? We've only been here drinking for, what, six years? He looks around. How much do we know? Been thinking of getting whirling and rags tatted on my ass, boss. There you go. Tatted on his ass. We know the place. There's locked door in the kitchen. Another on the roof. Ever been through those? No. But that don't prove anything. It's just two doors. We're not giving you Ruby for that. She's one of us. What if those two doors are connected, Eugene? Is that your name, Eugene? The lieutenant leans closer. If they're connected, she could have gone to the kitchen. Gotten up, shot him in the roof, then come down. All in five minutes. How about that? Yes, she could have. This is one long shot. He shakes his head, but the look in his eyes shows interest. Mm-hmm, because he suspected her before. A skilled Sambo artist could have climbed the outer wall like a spider. Garbage. He crosses his arms. It wasn't a Sambo artist, cop. It could have... I've been doing this for ten years. Let me give you a lesson, boys. It's never a Sambo fighter. And it's never a bullet betting sniper. Or a ghost, Lieutenant adds. It's never a ghost either. Don't worry, we've got better than that. He looks at you. Have you noticed the winch out back? The outer wall, the whirling? Alright, I'll play along. Those two doors are yours, the winch connects them? With some kind of dumbwaiter? That winch? Where's the winch? On the side of the building, E. You can see... You can see it from the harbor. He points to his eyeballs. You want to be a lieutenant, you got to keep your eyes peeled. I've seen the winch. Fuck off, man. The key I found there, points to the window. Maybe it's for a secret route. Your maybe isn't good enough, cop. You found some key. Did it have Ruby killed him written on it? Good one. It was in your box. I take it the ruby has been in here. Yeah, so what? She's been here. There's some key here, so she killed him. So, is a whack in the dark and you goddamn know it. Is it? It proves there are things about the whirling in Iraq that he doesn't know. He must see that. Have we firmly established Ruby could have could have access to the roof where the man was shot? Firmly. He shakes his head. Try shit on a stick. All you've established is a possible route to the roof that you haven't found. And even then, a route doesn't put the bullet in the merc's head. A gun does that, and Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least a shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Just don't contradict yourself. If it doesn't sound like Ruby did it, maybe keep it to yourself. What if you missed some in interesting information that way? The choice is ultimately yours, but... Show him the antique rifle. There are weapons like this just lying around in Martinez. That looks antique. A Belle Margrave. He takes the gun, inspects it, and hands it back to you. It's inoperable. Where'd you get it? 
There's a cellar under the bookshop. It was hidden there with others like it. Twenty, maybe thirty rifles, Titus. Also broken, but still. There were too many. And there must be other caches, too. God damn it, we need to close that dump down for good. Okay, I see your point. There are guns lying around. He shakes his head. Damn it, I thought we found all the goods, all the old spots. Why was that still there? We just missed one. Ruby doesn't know this place, boss. Just these cops digging up shit. I have analyzed the bullet that killed him. It was jacketed. So? The man shrugs and looks at you. So it had to come from a breech-loaded rifle. Military grade. He turns to you. Not even you militia monkeys have those. He doesn't wait for a response. This goes against your short-range theory. If the murder weapon was military grade, how did Ruby get it? You just showed him a breech loading gun. I just showed you a breech loader that any child could have. A broken old boomstick is what you showed me, but to a point taken. He nods. Time to really close the deal. Show him the bullet. This is the bullet that did it. 4.46 millimeter. The Bell Magrave uses, Ma uses the same caliber. The blonde man looks in the mushroomed death, looks at the mushroom deathbringer in the evidence bag and says, "Yeah, the bitch is jacketed, all right. Four millimeter too." Whoa. Well, goddamn. His eyes follow the evidence bag in your pocket. It's not proof, but it's a possible murder weapon. Close to her. Too damn close. He squints. You have been thorough, I'll give you that. We know it's not my old gun because it's the wrong type of weapon. Yeah, these are all unhelpful pieces of information that contradict what I was saying before. I didn't say I'd prove she had the murder weapon, just that we need to find her. Alright, he nods. Keep talking, I'm getting a bit curious about some things myself. He, we're not seriously considering it, are we? He almost gets up from his seat. Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase 3, motive, the last component. Hmm. It's not why'd she kill him, it's why'd she organize the cover-up. And I suppose you have a theory on that. She could have just been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it, the hanging? You went along, but she suggested it. The little man squints, eyes beady. She had, like, a fully formed plan and shit. Right when she came back downstairs. Really, Shanks? Clashay wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. He was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan. If I'd been first. Time for a, lo a logics demonstration. I'm picking a person to be the example murderer? Hmm. I think I might just stay focused on Titus. Titus, let's assume you killed him. You're on thin ass here, asshole. He points at you. It's a thought exercise, Titus. He explains. Think, you kill him. Get up there, shoot him. Get down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your men as part of a lynch mob or alone for cold-blooded murder? Alone? I don't drag my men into shit with me. If she used us, then that's a serious violation of the Hardy Code, boss. But she didn't. She would never do that. The blonde man looks around. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn? Titus looks grim. I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Ooh. 
So he didn't rule her out completely, and she skipped town. This is good. Maybe it's all part of a leadership challenge against you, Titus? There's no fucking leadership challenge. A flash of rage. He calms himself. This is when I thought you were taking this seriously, cop. You put your head in your ass. Man, now he's just throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks. Okay. The lieutenant steps in. We've ruled out infighting. That's how this works, by exclusion. Remember, all we need to do is rule Ruby out too. That's all this is. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up. We need to talk to her. Silence. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. A, s a very small nod. And a triple of tobacco spit on his lip. Thanks, Perception. Yeah, I see it. He puts his beer down. There's one more thing I've been wondering about. Ever since you asked me where she is. Add it to your list of suspicions if you want. I don't know. He smiles, a peculiar smile. I don't know where she went. She just up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where. However hard I asked. Wanna know why? Why? She was afraid I would tell you. He looks, he looks you straight in the eye. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. He knew there's evidence on her. She knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. Why fleeing is always incriminatory. Perhaps. He looks out the window again. Ask her, ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When did she leave? Friday afternoon, when you first arrived. I got word the RCM was in town, and she came in to see me. Told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. What was she scared of? I told you. You. Me, as in the RCM? No, you, as in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. <laughs> These options? No wonder she's afraid. I've come to declare the ending of the human experiment. I'm sorry. God, why does everything flee at the sight of my shadow? Or, I have no idea why I should be so scared. I'm just a normal cop with regular thoughts in my head. Sure, normal. He says without smiling. You know, when I first saw you limp in here, I thought she was paranoid. Or sniffing her own supply, but... He measures you up. Now I'm not so sure. What else did Ruby tell you about me? She said you have a funny taste in clothes, he scoffs, and that you won't stop. I mean, my character looks absurd right now because I got my logic hat on. Won't stop. Until you have something on her. She said she has heard of you from Jamrock, that you're a human can opener, that you play suspects against each other, open them up like cans. And when they're all empty, and when they're all empty, just move on. On to the next can. Don't look back, unless there was something you missed. Fucking hell. The tattooed man shakes his head. Tyus, did he just... Open Angus up like a can? Yes, he did. He nods. Now we can whine about it, whack him, or we can just go on with our lives. I'm having a... Go on a... I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day, Al. How about you? Yeah, open Angus like a can. Oh, you mean you mean how yesterday the fat guy came out and just started uh, exposing things? I'm like Angus wasn't talking just now. <laughs> Silence. He nods. Is that true, Kim? Am I am I a can opener? You are insistent. He nods. Anything else? Anything? Yeah, there was something else. She wouldn't tell me, though. I could see she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop, Titus. This cop, he's... She was too scared. 
Do you have any clues on where the ruby went? She's not far. We know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, Al. He gives a sharp look. And we won't either. She's not really a... The man stares into his beer. Hardy candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. Have you looked for her? A little, on the coast. Where have you looked for her more precisely? More precisely? On the coast, past the water lock. He, he nods southwest. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Who's doing this looking? They're all here. You're all here, who's out looking? He shrugs. Lizzie needed some air. So she didn't go to tell Everard. No one goes to tell Everard anything. He knows what he has to know fast. It's called a radio, you believe? The gardener may have played you again when she stormed out. She has her own plan. So the gardener's currently searching for her under the guise of going to Everard as an excuse to leave the room. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? Sure. There's some shit houses there, a cinder block town. The fisher folk that refused to, to unionize. So that's one place we haven't looked. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We will start there. The lieutenant takes a quick note. One more thing. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a loryman. Not much. But it'll do. It'll have to. He puts his hand out. Take it. His grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. You know, I don't usually do this. I just measure things, but... What? You said it'd be nice to have a ballistic slab. We could use you could use ours. I don't think I can make that promise, can I? <clears throat> I'm just kind of curious where this will go. You said it would be nice to have a ballistic slab. You could use ours. Nah, we're good. He lets go of your hand. Why not? You could turn this thing into to an actual police force. He extends his hand. Afraid you would actually have to follow the law. Rich boy law is a sham. He shakes his hand. It only works for the wild pines, lady. So keep your lab and watch your sass and watch your ass out there. The coast is a dangerous place for lawmen, especially Mr. Can Opener here. Well, things have gotten interesting. I do want to check out the secret passage, but I'm also curious about asking our friend over here about his friend, who we now know the name of. Maybe we can just skip right past the block we've had. You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours. Yeah, and? Notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Clashe. It was nice and ruby-centric in the end. What do you mean? Anything strike you as a bit off about the mishmash? So far, no one has mentioned hearing a shot. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even the Hardy and his boys didn't mention it. Neither did you. Well, the bullet didn't have to come from the roof. It could have come from anywhere on the coast. Absolutely. It could have come from anywhere. But you're suddenly so certain it came from a roof behind the window. The bullet was jacketed. These don't just lie around everywhere, do they? Good point. It is rather rare these days. But do continue. Turned out the bullet was an antique. True. Strange how you just... Conducted the whole advanced ballistics analysis and then hand-waved it. 
I'm done thinking about this. That's right. Finish thought. Just finish it and conveniently go on. She's watching you leave right now, you know that? Free as a bird on that roof. Lighting up a cigarette and thinking, Am I glad Ruby's in, in this shit and not, and not me? Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid. He's just jealous. Move on. It's no use harassing her further. No, I can talk about both of them. I can talk- I can talk about Ruby, I can talk about Clashe, and I can search the entire coast for a third potential, uh, person that could have done it, cause it's... Theory list is just all over the fucking place right now. <clears throat> Make way for the master poet. Hmm. There's no option to bring up the fact that you already know who she is. That doesn't push past at all. I imagine we're still stuck here too. Looking for something, Aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Yep. About what you'd expect. Well, I would like to confirm whether or not this secret passage leads to the roof or not. It'll be like when I was going through the abandoned district and how they were all connected. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. Could be connected to the barred door upstairs. Try the key. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn after all these years, but then the lock clinks. The darkness before you smells like engine grease and cut wood. I don't know if he even noticed that the door opened next to him. The door that never opens. This pinball says Franconjeron. The theme was horses and swords. The pinball is White Diora. The backlash shows a female figure in mourning. All these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your finger across the dust of the White Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white robed woman. What is White Diora? Some kind of. He looks around, thinking. Inane pinball theme. Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean Age. The history themes are the worst. Dare was th was the uh, was one of the three crown cities of the Delorean era, on the Mundi Isola. The other being Area Silvia, and Ad Vesperacci. The theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, pearl-laden women. It's quite nice, actually. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. Sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Ken. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. How about we fire up one of these bad boys and play some ball? You can't fire them up. They're broken. Only that one machine in the main hollow works. The Royalist Pinball. He looks away. What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of those machines about now. Think. Kim Kitsurugi. Kim Kitsurugi. Kim? Pinball? Kitsuragi? AKA Kimball? Exactly. That's what he's known as. His reputation precedes him. You're Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. So now he remembers. He looks at you in the silence of the workshop, then takes his glasses off and cleans them. Fine, I'm Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. He puts them back on. AKA the Kimball. You remembered. Congratulations. You don't seem to really like Pinball. No human being should. It's a game that requires no skill and a childlike affinity for flashing lights. And two fantastic 
science fiction, and historic romance franchises. It is lame. Then why are you called Kim, uh, called Pin... Kimball? I am not called Pinball. It was used to taunt me a long time ago, before I became a homicide detective and got my lieutenancy. How did you... He puts his glasses back on. Fine. I was a juvenile police officer for over 15 years. It's how I started out in the RCM. Once I had to infiltrate the pinball ring, as you do when you're a juvie cop. Okay. It was not okay. I needed to become a pinball champion. He shudders. I trained for nine months. The job was successful, and I was moved out of the juvenile wing to homicide. End of story. You were a juvie cop for 15 years. That time is over now. He looks at the pinball machine and breathes in. I was already a 38 year old, ma year old man. It was unbecoming. As was playing pinball. Oh my god, he was 21 Jump Street. He passed as being a young enough person, so he would, he would infiltrate those groups and pretend to be one of them and then that age group in order to bust someone. Jesus. Wait, so that's why you didn't talk to Kuno. It's best if you handle the juvenile delinquents. He nods. Don't worry, I'm still- I'll keep calling you Kim. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is good too. He nods. Now, we really need to consider- uh, continue our sweep of what appears to be a secret path through the whirling. Oh my god, the plot thickens. A note, NB, the spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. That's a weird place to hide the key. Also, you hid the key outside, but little note about where it is inside, which means if they can't find the key, they can't find the note. Whoopsie. Ooh, five dollars. That's the most I've ever found, I think, in one pickup. The small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The lattice cage is open, inviting you to step inside. So the winch is attached to this. It's not a dumbwaiter, it's a full-on elevator. Look in. It smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There's a control panel to your right, and just enough room for two people to fit in. And both get, both get killed in this elevator. <laughs> the maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last maintenance, 10th of July, 88. It says last maintenance was an 88. That it does. The lieutenant peeks in. I say, let's brave it. 88. This elevator was... <laughs> I love the option, by the way. This elevator was last maintained in the future? Nope, it's been so long that we're close to wrapping back around. 88. This elevator was maintained a long time ago. At the end of the last century. He nods. Look on the bright side. If it fails, we'll only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four, four months in the hospital, maximum five. It appears his whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. Oh boy. Look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons, Monter, Descendre, and uh, International Call for Emergency Assistance. The third one appears to be broken. Oh great. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner living, uh, lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. Wonder what this elevator was used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. Kind of surprised the light still works. All right. We'll leave that monstrosity for next episode. Maybe I'll just arrive at the next floor, no big deal. Or maybe uh, that'll be a whole problem. <laughs>